there, and welcome to Medical Girl Mystical World. I'm your host, Dr. Julia Spinello, and today our guest is Jamie Butler. You may know her as the owner of this fabulous network, and she's going to be channeling um, one of her spirit guides, Maitland, and tell the audience kind of what you do and what trans channeling is. Yes, if you are new to trans channeling, it looks a little different, but this is where I'm going to fully incorporate the spirit into my body so that they can use my body, my voice, gestures, mannerisms to answer your questions, mm -hmm. to speak with you. Yeah. Now give us a little history about Maitland and how she came into your world and a little bit about her background. Oh goodness. I met Maitland when I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I had attended a class that was called Psychic Awareness mm. and the teacher Marguerite Romas she helped me understand what my abilities were growing up as a kid and she could trance channel which the first time I saw that I thought that was the most strangest thing on the face of the planet there was no way that I was ever going to do that and mm -hmm. I didn't ever want to come back to one because it was it was spooky yeah you know I'm watching my 60 year old plus teacher fully Catholic woman Italian mm -hmm. and she has metal plates in her hips from an accident and her, she can't do the tailor position. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't rotate. But Maitland would get into her body mm -hmm. and that kid would just fold up her legs mm -hmm. and sit there and sing songs and she was so animated. It was nothing what my teacher was like. And we'd come, she'd come back out of it and we would tell her, oh my God, Maitland was sitting like this. Mm -hmm. And my teacher would say, there's no possible way. And she <laughs> always loved going and getting her x-rays. And like, could it, like <laughs> see Please. this plate? It's it not physically move. possible. Yes. <laughs> and we're like, but, you know, so we would take pictures of her and she's just like, I don't understand. Yeah. So one night she says, Jamie, you have this ability. I'd like for you to learn it. Mm -hmm. And she started putting me in the middle of the room, in the middle of the circle. And she's like, okay, we're going to hold space for you. This is what you're going to do. And that's how I taught. Maitland was the first spirit that I trans channeled. Mm -hmm. And she has stayed with me ever since and helping me get comfortable mm -hmm. with trusting spirit, with understanding that I'm safe, I'm protected, I'm not giving up myself for anything to come in. I have very strict boundaries, I have very strong belief systems that keep me safe. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been doing this now for 27 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't say that out loud. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but, um, oh, Malin, the way that she comes across, yes. she comes across as a nine-year-old little girl. And I want to make sure that just because that she presents that way does not limit her ability of knowing what all is. Correct. So... We're going to be talking to Maitland today about health issues and cool. what we as humans um, here on earth, how we go about our daily lives and our health practices and what really is key for us to stay healthy and what our body is as this vehicle, as light beings, being a vehicle to go through these lessons in life. So I'm going to, I've talked to so many um, healthcare providers and different people they're all humans, though. Oh, my gosh. So I really cool. would like to get yes. Spirit's perspective on how we go about our daily lives and our habits and what we do. And is it really, what are the essentials that we really need to know? Oh, this is going to be so much fun. So I, I want to, I kind of want to pick Maitland's brain, I guess. Go for it. And see what she's got to say about everything that we're doing in the world and, um, you know, to see what words of wisdom, because Maitland is um, so inspiring, and she's got quite a following um, with the people that have known you for years, and um, so um, actually, I have a couple of things I wanted to tell her when she does come through that she's inspired me to do, and then we'll get um, on with the, the subject at hand, so. Great, you ready? Like, my palms are sweating. <sighs> so you, you let me know when you're ready, and... <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do it. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Dr. Julia. <laughs> Bye, Jesse. Bye.
Hi, Lumineers. <laughs> Hi, people watching. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Maitland. Hey, Maitland. Hello, Julia. Hey, Maitland. How are you? I'm very good. I like these chairs. I like them too. They're comfortable, aren't they? They are very comfortable. They don't, they don't have the arms. Yeah. I kind of would like to have like bigger chairs with arms so we can be like Edith Ann. <laughs> I'm really dating myself there. I don't know an Edith Ann. It was a um, character that Lily Tomlin played. I forget what show that was on, but she played a little girl actually. And um, she would sit in this big chair and talk about things and give advice and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So welcome to my show. I'm so happy you're here. Medical girl, mystical world. Maitland is on. Yes. Isn't that a cool name? I love the name. It fits you perfectly. Thank you. Okay, before we get started, first mm -hmm. of all, I wanted to tell you that um, I wanted to thank you, actually. There are two things that I've implemented in my life that came from you, that were inspired by you. So I wanted to say thank you. And the first one is that you had a talk over a year ago, so it was about animals, and of course, Maitland loves animals, and she does a lot of channeling um, with the viewers and asking, answering questions. And you had, um, were, you were talking about giving back as, you know, community, and you had suggested that people volunteer with animals. So that week, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do that. So I did. I started volunteering. So I volunteer with, uh, to take care of kitties, and I do Reiki on them once a week. And that's all because of you. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> and it feels so good. It does. It warms my heart. And it's like the thing that I look forward to every week. It is so much fun. And the other thing I wanted to thank you for was that you did a show on Mother Earth. And you, um, I had been wanting to do this for years to start recycling in my home. And because of you, I ordered. You recycle? I recycle now because of you. Yay! Yay! And I feel so good about it. Good, because that's, it's very important. It is very important. I've got my husband on board, and we are big-time recycle, recyclers now because of Maitland, because and, of you. And then once you make that a habit, then you adapt another 1% change. Yep. And then um, maybe you can start to recycle the soft plastics, like the bags, mm -hmm. because yep. they don't normally go in the recycling bin. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. Yay. Thank you for listening and 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 stating how good it feels when you follow through with things that align with you. Yeah. All right. Well, today, guess what we're going to be talking I'm about? I'm going to pretend to be a spirit doctor. You are. <laughs> and why I have you here, because I have all of these healthcare professionals that come on my show. And, when the, you know, I'm trying to get what is it that we need in our lives that can make us healthy people and different practices and really it's for people whatever they can resonate with mm -hmm. so when i thought about having you on the show i said i'd really like to get spirit's perspective that's you on how we as humans take care of our body so it's i have very silly. it uh, so that's why i wanted to talk to you because there's so much information out there and there's so many, you know, people can be very unhealthy or they can be very extreme and what is the what is the middle ground and what are you guys thinking in the spirit world when you're looking down on us and we're doing all of these things and like, oh, they don't need that or no, they really need that. So I'm just going to open that up, that idea, and you just kind of tell me what you think, and then I have other questions that I can ask you as we go along with the conversation, but we'll just keep this open, and we'll just go with the flow. Well, the first thing I want to mention is when we're observing humanity, and we're just going to say that time is linear, mm -hmm. just for our conversation. Sure. Okay. That um, we observe that the people on Earth all of a sudden learn how to cure everything, Mm -hmm. And then uh, a shift of power happens. It could be greed on control. It could be on a government stance. It could be all about money or, you know, just power. Mm -hmm. And then that information gets lost, taken okay. away. And then we, we're like, we're back into the medieval times. That's one of the moments where we were at where no cures were out there. And everybody was just suffering more in a lower vibration. And then all of a sudden we become more enlightened and we understand things, which is the up curve mm -hmm. tick 
that you're on in the scale. Because you're starting to understand that sound and vibration heals and um, that, that um, belief systems are what power the healing, not so much the perfect dosage of what you're taking. Mm -hmm. And that plant life and um, natural plant life, not... Um, um, what do they do when, when they make the plant a different The synthetic plant? plants? Yeah. Not those, but the natural plant life is the basis of the strongest medicine that you could put in your body. Mm -hmm. um, so th with that, even though the humanity is starting to learn about vibrations, they're not using them in a day-to-day -day dosing level. Mm -hmm. And um, as where we are, we're doing our best to help people on earth see that they don't have to go through the deepest struggles anymore because mass information is coming out like the hundredth monkey when they all believe in it then the next island over mm -hmm. gets the knowledge as well so more and more people are understanding the importance of plant and eating healthy and mm -hmm. staying in movement which um, I think is the next big wave like we got into, you got into technology very mm -hmm. strong on Earth, and um, being in front of the the phone, being in front of the tablet, the computer, the TV, mm -hmm. and though there's a lot of um, good knowledge that comes that way, it is consuming the percentage of a person's awake state, mm -hmm. and it's very unhealthy because. The dosage of nature is not being given every day mm -hmm. where um, you guys have a belief system that you have to work out every day yeah you know <clears throat> energetically what the first thing to take care of in a human body is its energetic body okay that's number one because mm -hmm. the energy is what feeds everything mm -hmm. and nature feeds and balances your energy and so we're over here whispering as much as you see the value in exercise, we'd like for you to see the value of being in nature as being number one. Okay, so when you say being in nature, do you mean, or just being in nature, just sitting outside and taking that in, or or moving the body in nature? Tell me kind of more what, what you're saying. Just when you're in nature, you can be doing whatever you want. It could be your grounding techniques when you're barefoot and you have your feet in the sand or the dirt. It could be that you have a green room that you build in your house and you bring in the trees and you bring in your garden and you're tending to your garden. Mm -hmm. It could be um, just pulling weeds. It could be sitting. It could be in a hammock outside. But it's um, getting into the natural sunlight. The, um, the, the earth sends off its positive, negative, and neutral um, energy mm -hmm. streams. But um, when we are connected to the earth, it is a grounding element and it is a neutral stream of energy that we're connecting to. And if you know a lot about the body's energetic system, mm -hmm. you would know that when you're in your conscious awake state, you're, you're, you're pretty much, that's when you're spending your time and that's when you're getting old mm -hmm. and that's when you're wearing down your brain and um, you're making the wrinkles <laughs> and everything happen. But um, when you sleep, there's a repairing system that happens. Mm -hmm. But repairing systems can kick into gear when you're on the earth because a wake state demands that you use your positive and your negative energies. Positive energies rest mostly on the right side of the body and negative energies rest on the left side of the body. And when you're listening, I don't want you to think that positive means good and negative means bad. Mm -hmm. The good and bad in your mind, that's a judgment thing that you were taught. The positive and the negative are the qualities of the energy that we're discussing. And these can wear and tear on your physical, mental, and emotional health. But then you have a neutral line in the center, mm -hmm. the Shashuna line, and it's it has no charge. It's really grounding. And so when you get into the earth energy, she likes to bring the positive and negative and create a neutral element. And so it brings your body at rest. Mm -hmm. And it physically will decrease your heart rate, it changes your, um, what do you call it when your tummy is growling and wants to digest food? Just, 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 just. Peristalsis? Per peristalsis. 
Peristalsis only happens when you're in a calm state. Mm -hmm. um, it won't happen when you're stressed out or when you're angry or you're jealous. And, um, and so that kicks into gear. Mm -hmm. And um, it brings the mind peace and it calms your emotional body. Mm -hmm. So like dose yourself with nature. Okay, that's great. So with exercise, um, it is good to move. Yeah. <laughs> It's good to move your body and because it does it helps that energy flow I do believe that what is enough and what is too much so I would say number one dose yourself with nature and then my number two priority for human body health care would be the movement mm -hmm. what is too much um, what do you mean like talk about it in like how many hours well yeah or there's talk about it in like the the str strenuous yeah, the strenuous ones. So, for example, there is a popular fitness program that is quite strenuous, and it's where you're doing just this really hard exercise and pushing yourself, and it is just, oh my goodness, it's so exhausting to even watch people do this, and it's really hardcore stuff. Is that... When you're pushing the physical body, mm -hmm. there's, um, that's fine. Yeah. When, when you're crossing the line is when you're in extreme heat mm -hmm. and you're not hydrating yourself. Um, when you're injured and you're, you're ignoring it. Mm -hmm. um, when there's any kind of pain or discomfort and you're taught to push through it mm -hmm. to win, yeah. that is when you're harming yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you like to push and push yourself, whether it's pushing the big tires down the road yeah. or the chains or whatever, mm -hmm and you're doing it in a safe way where your body is empowered by it, then we're all for it. Mm -hmm. There's really no wrong exercise. Um, I know some people are going, what? <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. um, as long as you are doing it within your body's limits and you're not creating pain and that it's not long-term repetition. Mm -hmm. Long-term repetition wears down on the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I see you see with sports injuries and you know and but, but we as humans we're very a lot of us are very competitive too. Oh, completely. <laughs> it's like that is, an is earth that really worth it? That's a quality on earth. Yes. So, kind of segue in, into that. Um, is it good when we do those practices such as the exercises? How much benefit is that for our soul growth? Taking care of the physical body? Yeah. Well, the physical body is, um, I mean, when you talk about soul growth, do you mean, like, what's the purpose of having the physical body contribute to Correct. your enlightenment? Yes. Well, it's the maintenance and the care. Mm -hmm. And it helps you put uh, priority systems in place mm -hmm. where you say, I must um, put myself first mm -hmm. because now it's hungry or it has to go to the bathroom or it's tired, mm -hmm. which is, um, I would say, sleep mm -hmm. for the physical body is like really high up on the health care system. Okay. Um, is that not needed? No. Oh, sleep? what is? It it's very, very it's, it's high up there. Okay. I, I would even sneak it in above dosing yourself with nature. Oh, wow. You know, okay. like sleep, diet, mm -hmm. nature, exercise. Okay. So with diet, um, I'm familiar with... You guys with... eat strange things. <laughs> well, I'm familiar with... Like our fruits and vegetables are very high vibration foods. Yes, whole foods are very high vibrational foods. Yeah. So tell me about our diet and are we doing our diets right? Or, or is there an extreme like with exercise that we can do with diet as well? Diets on the earth in general, well, we still look at places like um, Africa where the mainstream mainstream processed foods, mm -hmm. manufactured foods, haven't gotten to them mm -hmm. in some places. The diet is still maintained well. Mm -hmm. But um, eating non-manufactured food is good. <clears throat> Non-processed food. 
eating what is in season Mm -hmm. is necessary and I think that knowledge has been forgotten because when you eat what is growing in that season you're actually feeding vibrationally what your body is needing during that season that's a really good point I never thought of it that way yeah because when your body goes into your winter into your cold days Mm -hmm. um, its metabolism and the way its chemical balances is different than the way that it processes during a summer heat. Mm -hmm. And some foods require a different type of energetic vibration to digest and store its nutrition. Mm -hmm. So if you can think that your digestive system has gears, like first, second, third, fourth, that you you want to feed the energy in gear one Mm -hmm. in uh, spring or summer, or what is growing in spring or summer at that time. When you start eating outside of your seasons, you're, you're telling your body that it needs different energetic values to digest it and store it. Mm-hmm. And it gets confused. And it starts to think that um, what its natural rhythm is mm-hmm. is no longer necessary. And so it'll start to get off. And we get all these gut issues. Like mm-hmm. our, our small intestines, it does a lot more. And I like the phalanges, <laughs> and I like how they look, and they, and they move through. They do a lot more than just move the food through. Well, they absorb the nutrients. And yes, mm-hmm. they absorb all the nutrients. But they're also producing chemicals that feed into the secondary brain, mm-hmm. the gut brain in the system. It's not in the digestive system, but it is linked to the digestive system. And so when the gut is clouded and um, junked up with things that it can't process, Mm -hmm. the gut brain is, and then that communicates to the brain up here, and then this brain becomes off-balanced and foggy and lost. Um, So it's really important what you put into your body powers it Mm -hmm. rather than junks it up. And most of you know what that is, but you still continue to eat it because there are... Um, your your whole body is controlled by the microorganisms in the gut. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, hey, we got overwhelmed with these sugar ones, and now we're addicted to sugar, and we're going to tell you to eat it, even though you have told yourself you don't want it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, and we talk about addictions with cigarettes and drugs mm-hmm. and all these being real bad issues. We have a bad breakout of sugar addiction. Mm-hmm. And um, these sugar microorganisms that are fed by sugar are overtaking the other ones that are asking for the protein, Mm -hmm. that are asking for other types of cravings that will power you rather than numb you. Mm -hmm. And these are the guys that send the signals to the head for the joy, the happiness, the serotonin release, and all of it. And we're not paying attention to it. Yeah. Well, I never knew about that. That's a really good correlation there. I never did think about that. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) So what do you think about with diseases? And I've known that this question is pop. (laughs) Disease. That I've seen on your, um, when you've channeled before and it's Mm -hmm. come up on Jamie's feed, where people say, why are some people diagnosed with different diseases or chronic diseases or they're born with debilitating um, problems? What is, and I know this because I've done a lot of study on soul work, and I know that my understanding is that when we are born and we are brought into these bodies that, first of all, we chose the bodies that we came into, and that there are the reasons, there are reasons that we have to learn why we are born in that body, but also the people that are around us too, because that's part of their lessons. So, can you elaborate more on that for me? Yes. Thank you. I have two really strong points I want to say. Okay. Um, Whatever dis-ease or illness that you possess can be healed. I know some of you don't have that belief system, but I'm presenting you with an ultimate truth. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just getting your belief system aligned with it. And that whatever dis-ease or illness that you're carrying, you are feeding it. 
What do you mean? Well, to have a disease or an illness stay in place, you have to possess the, the desire for it. And that's, that goes beyond just a conscious thought. Right. It's, yeah, definitely. Because some people will say, when, um, you know, I got this disease, I didn't want it, and I don't need it, and I've told myself I don't want it, and why won't it go away? Mm-hmm. And I believe I don't want it, so what you're saying, Maitland, is a lie. But it's more than the want, not want. It's um, the belief systems wrapped around why it has come to you. And you've learned it. You've gone through it mm-hmm. with your breast cancer. Yep. And, and you learned all the, the, the breasts are self-love and the nurturing to the world. Breast cancer often comes to men and women who um, have a hard time prioritizing themselves with self first Mm -hmm. um, because maybe they think or they believe that it's egotistical Mm -hmm. or it's not kind and so they'll put others in front of them and so they stop nurturing themselves and and it created the vibration over time Mm -hmm. to where then the cancer that fed off that low vibration could multiply right and it grows Mm -hmm. Um, so whether you were predispositioned or predisposed, yeah. Or predispositioned, yeah. Predisposed or de- what that one? <laughs> that um, maybe, I get messed up on that. My words too sometimes. It's okay. <laughs> maybe the family had it. Maybe yeah. it came down the mother's or the father's line, mm-hmm. um, ancestral line lineage. There's um, lessons to be had in there as well. Um, but even if you're predisposed to it. If you have learned how to put self first, mm-hmm. most likely, um, most likely, I'm speaking in very general terms, that the breast cancer would not grow. Mm-hmm. But um, even then, it's um, the way we look at healing ourselves when we have these issues. Like we all want to think that healing is the thing to go for Mm -hmm. you know when something's bad we need to fix it when something's wrong Mm -hmm. we have to make it right because that is the thing to do but that's that's just how you've been taught yeah that's just how you've been taught to see the world that when someone is sick they have to be healed to be better and then loved and likable and that sick is sad i'm so sorry for you and this is bad Mm -hmm. but I will say, through some people's sick and disease and illness, they are their best versions of themselves. Well, as all of them are best versions of themselves, but some of them require that experience to know who they are. Yes, and I'm glad that you said that because that happened to me when I was going through my recovery, and it was amazing. It was this awakening and this centering, and I was like, I, I think that we are giving these um, opportunities, really, to help with our growth and our soul growth and how we are as humans. So even though there are people where they do have devastating diagnoses and um, can be sick for a while, but when you, when you step back and instead of fixing the problem, what am I supposed to learn from this? And that's what a lot of people don't get is what is that? Oh, it's, it's horrible. It's devastating. You know, and you know, you don't want them to be sick, but to really step back and say, what is my lesson for this? Yeah. Most people would dive into the fight realm. Yeah. I have to fight this. Yeah. I don't have to be better. And when you, def- when you fight like that, you just put up another wall. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So how can we help one another um, kind of embrace these things to help people. I mean, I'm, we can't tell people how to act and how to accept things, but as, be, as far as making like what we're talking about more receptive to people to consider. Well, I think it's a cultural issue. Is it just in our culture here in the United States? or Really? Tell me more about that. Um, it's in many other cultures. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to think the United States is still leading the way for how to behave. Yeah. And it's single-handedly kind of crushing down old traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that's what's going on. Because mm-hmm. um, some things need to be torn down before you can rebuild them in a Absolutely. better way. Yep. Um, but um, it's mostly looking at why do we need the judgment to understand where to go. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of the judgment stuff is being fed by marketing today. <laughs> and that and, and United States leads in marketing and products. There's more money behind marketing in United States than elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I say that link. Mm-hmm. And um, why do we need the judgment of this is right and this is wrong and this is good and this is bad? Why aren't we setting aside the judgment and following our intuitive self mm-hmm. inside? There's a voice inside that is constantly guiding you. Mm-hmm. And then there's that crazy like voice in your head going, why are you thinking of that? That's wrong. That's crazy. You didn't even know that. Wow, you didn't know that, and that was true. Oh, my God. Oh, it's, you know, you know, can we let go of the crazy voice and just stick to that voice inside of us that's going, you know this is where we want to be. Mm-hmm. Well, that's when we have to pr- provide classes that help people learn um, better communication skills mm-hmm. and how to identify emotions mm-hmm. and and allow children to develop with the sense that their imagination and their intu- intuition are valuable mm-hmm. and that they don't need to be set aside to then develop some skill or technique for their livelihood. Oh, because we I was saying when you get the notion that you want to quit your job, mm-hmm. but you can't because you're not going to have the money to support yourself and you say, I can't quit the job to go heal. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when it's time to start asking for help yeah. because the can't is just the story you tell yourself. The can't is the excuse. Mm-hmm. The um, You're already blocking your road before you even peer over what you imagine to be the walls because there might be a spouse or a family member or something or somebody at work that can help you come together and provide you with money, which is just energy, so that you can stay home then take care of yourself and mm-hmm. follow your intuitive hit. Right. And another thing I learned, too, with going through my own, own illness was that I had to tell myself, not everything needs to be done today. And I, I, okay. that, that let me sit back and enjoy the moments, and I would sit there, and I would watch my birds outside. And I'd watch them eat from their little bird feeder all day. And that was enough for me, you know? <laughs> that was very healing for me. And I'm so glad I, I did that. I didn't watch TV I couldn't concentrate on that, and I just did. I allowed myself to heal. And instead of, because people do that, they put these pressures on them Mm -hmm. to constantly go, 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 and I've got to do this, i got to do this, and I'm like, I don't have to do anything. You don't. And, um... Did did, did that stay with you, even after your, your cancer went away? It did. It did, which was a huge shift for me. And it really made me look things at a very different perspective on how I used to be because I'm a very type A person and go, 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 overachiever, you know, that kind of thing. Can we make um, healing post-it notes? Sure, we can make healing post-it notes. And like, um, the the post-it ones is the one that has the sticky and you pull it off and Mm -hmm. you stick it and it says, you're lying, not everything has to be done today. Yep. We'll just stick Duke. it somewhere. Uh-huh. Stick it for people. Because people, I I see that um, people need reminders. It's like they get into the moment, into the meditation, and they're developing their new belief system around it. And then all of a sudden, their indoctrinated belief system comes in and goes, Oh, you have to go do those dishes before you can get the dinner on the table. At the da, 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 da. And it's, oh, I'm a robot. I must go do. <laughs> and you need these reminders to help you reverse what you've learned from other people and your culture to then understand truly what does your unique body need, your mind, your soul, your emotions, what does it need? Mm -hmm. And those post-it notes would be very nice. They would be very nice. We should make those. Okay. (laughs) Okay, one more thing and we're going to wrap up. Oh. I know. My last question for Mm -hmm. you is about our health and karmic issues and... I know that with health, <laughs> you're going <laughs> to, is our health related, our health today related to karmic issues in the past? And how do we take care of our body now in this lifetime? 
carry on to our future lifetimes. Your health is energetically related to the body you have now and all the other incarnations that you've chosen to live. Mm -hmm. Karma does not play a part in it. Karma is a man-made belief system okay. that what you've done at one point was not balanced and you have to go balance. Right. It is the judgment that you place on something that you feel you haven't completed. That I agree to. Mm -hmm. But the definition of karma is that somebody above you has said, that was right, this was wrong, you are praised, you are punished, you must carry on. Mm -hmm. And there is nobody outside of you saying, that is right, this is wrong, blah, 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 blah. It's just you. Gotcha. It's just you doing it to yourself. Gotcha. And yes, those can relate to all the other incarnations that you do, that hmm. you have. Well, you put that Past quite... Present. Present. And future. And future. Yeah. Well, you put that quite succinctly. I'm sure JC will be very happy that we didn't go on. But we could go on forever about it, couldn't we? We could. We could. We could have a whole show on it. We might just do that. Okay. Okay. Maitland, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. And I'm so happy you are here and to enlighten everybody and hopefully answer some questions that other viewers have had. And I'm very, very grateful. Me too. Yay! I'll see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. <laughs> I'll see you soon, baboon. Oh! <laughs> okay. Well, we'll stop with that one and then we'll continue on later. How's that? Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.